the reading for today? Yes, please. Yes. It's in the chat if you don't have it with you. Okay. This meeting may involve the remote participation by members, either by telephone or other electronic means due to the local public health emergency novel coronavirus pandemic pursuant to the provisions of Minnesota statute section 13D.021. Perfect. So if we want to do some updates or anything here at the beginning, we only have one big thing on our agenda today. Hi, everyone. I'm here. It's good Special to see you, Bree. Hey, Chris, for, for stepping up while I am. Good to, have, good to have you back. Surviving, thanks. <laughs> Absolutely. My apologies to everyone for um, my lovely background made of real books. I'm a, in a public library, so if I step off, it might be uh, because of that. So, um, But Chris, do you want to do any level setting before we? Yeah, well, I, I, I do think the, we talked a little bit about what that that first um, kind of like vague, uh, I forget what it is on the agenda, what is it? Uh, BAC strategic planning. Part of mm -hmm. that um, was just to give space for, and I don't know if you're going to get into this, Heather, but to give space for people to have ask questions about um, like what the new council mayor structure means and like just anything like that um, and like what, what the core function of the BAC is or Anything so I, I guess I'm just interested in kind of mm -hmm. opening that up whenever you think it's OK to kind of talk about that or I don't know if you have any guiding questions for that one in particular. Yeah, I think that's a great place to start. Um, when we were sort of starting to build this agenda and Bree knowing that, you know, kind of you're coming into the space and wanting to hold space for you to dive into the CIP resolution also. Um, wanting to figure out if there were any questions from members in this space related to the changes that are happening. Um, and we don't quite have all of those answers, but I think I'm just wanting to get some idea of the level of understanding um, that folks may have, uh, since it's not super possible inside of the larger committee meeting to really talk about the structural changes. Phil? Um, uh, uh, yeah, okay, you can hear me. I think my question would be looking at last year's, uh, let me jump to it here, um, looking at the fairly long resolution that we sent in on CAP last year, uh, do we have a sense of sort of how that was, um, you know, so how public works reacted to it? Was there a, I mean, I, I know that we've, We've done one specific thing, which is track miles of, <clears throat> you know, curb protected, um, uh, you know, separated bikeways. Um, but we had a number of specific and more general recommendations in the resolution last year. Do we, you know, can we gauge how that was how that was uh, responded to by Public Works and, and City Council? Kind of a broad, open-ended question, but. Yeah, I guess it's a little, I'll just be honest, I, I don't remember everything. I, I can look at it now, but I don't remember everything that was in that resolution last time, but I, I think there was a lot um, like more high level stuff than there had been previously and just kind of pointing out that kind of the, the system as a whole is something that needs to be revamped. Um, and, and I'll just say this to that, like there hasn't been a major change in the way that we do the CIP, like it's still looks relatively the same as last year and I think maybe part of part of the resolution last year was kind of um, proposing a, like a major overhaul to that so I don't, I don't know if that fully answers your, your question or if Matthew you have anything to add or other members if you have like perceptions of how the resolution did or didn't have an impact. 
This is Matthew. I, I think I can't remember if the CIP team specifically addressed that when they came a few months ago or not, but it's definitely something that um, they and we can do when they come back um, in the near in the near future. Um, I think they do typically address it, and I, and I think part of it is we know certain things, like we know we haven't developed a a, a new program such as neighborhood greenways um, or things like that. You know, the most recent uh, big thing was the Vision Zero program. So I'd have to kind of look back again more specifically, but um, yeah, I just wanted to add mm -hmm. that see that we can address that <clears throat> as yeah. a team. And and also maybe just say like I I do think the resolution. Like there was a lot of conversation last year with the CIP team between us and like the resolution you all made and what it means and lo looking at some of the more specific bullets in there now like create and propose uh cbr request to to fund the entire transportation action plan is like pretty sp specific i don't think that in its exact form was done but there has been a lot of work to put the tap into action through the cip projects and things like that um, and so, I mean, if it would be helpful, I, I think Matthew's right that the CIP team did have some of that in their presentation when they came of kind of what was hit and what wasn't. But um, if it seems useful for today in kind of crafting this resolution to look back at last year's and take pieces of it and say, okay, do we think this part worked or didn't work or was taken or wasn't taken, um, we could do that. Mm -hmm. And Alyssa, I see. Your hands up, Phil. I don't know if you wanted to respond. I would just, to that. I just, I mean, it was interesting to to read the um, pedestrian advisory council 2022 resolution, and they just came out with what uh, 10, 10, 20 million uh, for two years or over two years. I mean, they were they had some more general overarching statements, but their resolution they obviously <clears throat> decided strategically they just wanted to go for the money, although they didn't specify, they didn't dig into the um, uh, capital improvement individual proposals and identify. They just put a, a, a money figure, which is so, somewhat different than what we did, but I'm new to this. So yeah, maybe Alyssa, you have more thoughts. Yeah, um, thanks all. I think so a couple different things. So last year's resolution, the 20 21 resolution. Sorry, I'm still having the pandemic time work. Uh, was based on the 2020 resolution that we passed. So we had passed a resolution in 2020. That was really a shift uh, away from what we had done previously, which was really focused on individual projects um, and move towards sort of a, a more uh, what Chris talked about, like pushing them to rethink the process as well as providing some individual comments. Um, so I would say 2020 felt like a very different resolution than 2019, and there is absolutely no reason that we need to refer back to last year's resolution if we don't want to. If we just want to start from scratch uh, and have some different thoughts on it, that's great. Um, so I think that's one piece. Uh, another piece that I will just highlight is I think it has taken, for the most part, us uh, having a repeated stance on things for public works to react to something. So it is not particularly common that like the first year we're like, please do X, whatever X is, that public works is like, great, thumbs up. We're just going to like change our entire process and do that. Uh, it's more that we, you know, we pass a resolution that floats that idea. We're in conversation for a couple of years. I know, for example, the pedestrian advisory committee was really invested in pushing the sidewalk gaps program. Um, that like didn't used to exist and it took like years of, of uh, putting that forward as a priority to make that actualized. So I, I guess I, I both want to say we can start from scratch and also that like we shouldn't be totally discouraged if the things we were asking for in prior years didn't get implemented right away. That doesn't mean we shouldn't ask for them again if we want them again. Um, the last thing I'll add is just some context from the pedestrian advisory committee. So they are really moving further and further away from commenting on specific projects um, and ask and continuing to focus in on asking the uh, public works department to change its approach to this, the capital improvements process and uh, move towards rapid implementation and move funding towards rapid implementation and move away from uh, 
um, funding that bolsters car infrastructure. So those are kind of the three pieces of context that I think I would add to the discussion. I don't know if anyone has questions on any of that. That was all helpful. Thanks, Alyssa. Maybe uh, Philip again. Maybe I would just jump in and say, it, you know, in, in thinking about how uh, sort of, I mean, what we're aiming for certainly is greater <clears throat> use of bicycle facilities, and it, it feels like, you know, those of us who have bi been biking forever will bike on anything, and we love um, <clears throat> separated bike paths. But eh, you know, we'll bike. But for the majority of people, older people, um, people with kids, uh, new bicyclists, teenagers, it does feel like, you know, separated bike, um, especially in four to three conversions, uh, putting that one and a half to two foot concrete separator, that just feels like a a, a big thing. And again, I, I, I know that, uh, Matthew, you and Chris, you know, you've, you've tracked, you know, each year, how many miles have we added of um, separated bike lanes? And it feels like that that's a that's a very focused thing to ask for and certainly can be done in four to three conversions because there's more space digging into each individual um, individual um, capital improvement program, sometimes focused on roads, sometimes bikes, sometimes pedestrians, sometimes green infrastructure. It's certainly one way to go, but the other way is to simply pick a number of miles or or pick a a dollar figure, which the PBA, or the Pedestrian Advisory Council did. So that's sort of how I reacted in reading the um, two pieces of uh, <clears throat> information you sent out prior to this meeting. And if there are no other questions, I'm, I'm going to let Heather kind of lead us through the um, actual resolution process in a, in a second here, but while we're still kind of on the context stuff, um, I, I will just say for, I think the assumption for now at least would be to continue operating as we were previously, despite like the change in the um, mayor and the council structure. Like I, I, I think as far as we know, the BAC's role remains largely the same in terms of kind of advising um, elected officials and public works staff. Um, and there is a, a meeting, I, I think next week, I don't, I don't know if Matthew or Millicent, if, if you remember, but where they kind of break down, like they do the voting for council roles and who's on what committees and um, things like that. And we might know some more information then, um, but for the time being, I, I would say, I think handling it generally kind of in the same way probably makes sense. Are there any other questions or comments um, about the CIP process as it stands or kind of the BIC, the BAC role in what this resolution can do before we kind of move? Okay. So just from some context from the last few years of kind of being a part of this CIP conversation, I really have seen it change over time. Uh, my first year on the BAC, it was very project specific. And as Alyssa has mentioned, has really moved into that bigger idea space. Um, something that I'm hoping we can consider here is kind of two things um, as we're making this decision. One, um, strategically, how do we want to align our resolution on the CIP with our five E's and our expectations for the mayor's office, for council and for public works? Um, <clears throat> and then that other one to really think about those five E's plus engineering when we're talking about the types of things that we want to build accountability for. Um, inside of this and based on our previous conversations, it sounds like we really have kind of three options for how we want to have the conversation about starting our resolution. 
one of them being to do some updates to the one that we used last year um, and just briefly go through, add some updates, change some things that might have um, that might be different between 21 and 22, uh, but largely keep the structure the same. Uh, the second option being to take that route of saying we really only want to talk about the CIP process um, and maybe uh, point out some of the things that don't match our values or that we don't see reflected. Uh, and then the other being somewhere in between the two of those where we do point out some things and changes that we'd like to see to the CIP process, um, but also make some of those very specific um, requests like we did last year uh, and include it in some of these bigger idea concepts. Um, and in saying that I did start kind of drafting a hybrid in between the two of those to give us a place to start, but I'm interested in hearing from folks about which of those options make sense um, with the goal being that today we sort of leave this meeting with something that we can workshop a little bit and then take to the full committee next month. Heather, I've got a question. This is Dan Miller. Um, did you mean this month or next month to come before the full BAC? I, this okay. next month, <laughs> the next meeting. The next meeting. Okay, thank you. And, Sorry. And, and I'll just say, Dan, like we, we talked about that as a goal, but I, I want to make it clear that like we do have more time if we need it, so we, we don't have to have it by this full one. If we leave this meeting saying, okay, we need another workshop session or, or a lot more work outside of the meeting and then bring it to the next five you we could we can definitely do that but the goal was kind of to um, make it short and sweet this year uh, just a question a follow-up question the uh, this resolution will go both to public works and to the council correct yeah, and so uh, the council being uh, a lot of them new uh, in their positions, I I somewhat think that uh, your your thought of being short and sweet is a good idea. <laughs> in other words, hit on some main points because you know how much do they know of all the things that have gone on with the transportation action plan and uh, the stuff. I mean, they're on a learning curve too, and. Uh, uh, yeah, so I think hitting some major points would be good. Thanks. And just to clarify, I did mean short and sweet for the process, not necessarily the resolution. I know a couple of the um, CIP resolutions in the past have been a little bit lengthy, but just just to clarify where I was coming from on that. Go ahead, Phil. Yeah, well, yeah, I was, I was definitely thinking we we need that sort of overarching, uh, sort of background, um, sort of uh, to help new city council members understand the, you know, previously, you know, previous city council direction and, you know, policy uh, um, uh, support for what we then explain. Um, as you know, we have a transportation action plan, but it, it's not fully funded. It hasn't been, you know, um, <clears throat> has been mapped out year to year. How do we actually accomplish it in ten years? So we need to certainly mention that. Um, I, so in that sense, we, I think, Heather, what you're saying is that we we need to sort of address principles and talk about the process that we're using and, and that we have to observed in <clears throat> accomplishment or not accomplishment of uh, transportation action plan goals and and then it does i don't know it does fill with me with it feels to me for a new council to um to have an overarching we want this as in and that's obviously what the <clears throat> pedestrian council did um <clears throat> so it, it that seems important to have one clear specific Focus asked, 
but the um, but perhaps a final part of a resolution would be to dig into individual capital improvement um, proposed projects and say, you know, wait a minute, you're you're doing a road con uh, four to three conversion, but what you're not adding, you know, um, <clears throat> a quality bicy bicycle facility here for this project we specifically. So, so there could it could be three or four sort of sections of the resolution. So it's not short, but it's it's crisp enough so it's easy for the new council members to skim, and then they see that there is a obviously a budget ask that, and and we want to you know and we want to say as a BAC that we're we want to track this. We want to see money devoted and uh, progress and accomplishment within 12 months, 24 months, 36 months. So again, my thoughts. Melissa, it looks like your hands up. Thanks, Chris. One thing I guess I will add is that, you know, a lot of our so our resolutions come in advance of the Capital Long Range Improvements Committee, the CLIC process. Um, and so a lot of our specific project comments or program comments have been based on what has been proposed in prior years. Um, and one thing I would be interested in figuring out is how we share some of the uh, policy-based information that we are working from with the capital long range improvements committee and or with council uh at some level obviously council is going to be engaging with those policies at a at a different level than folks who are volunteering on the on the click um i think dan miller is going to continue to serve on, i think you're i think you're maybe in year two of a two-year term on click um but I, I, I just wonder if there is a role for me as the committee chair to be communicating with CLIC to be doing some sort of presentation to maybe be coordinating with the pedestrian advisory committee about their priorities about some of those specific projects. Um, you know, certainly we can continue to comment on those within a resolution. Um, but I, I guess I just wanted to sort of call out that we're we're always working with like one year's backdated information in terms of pushing public works on what we do or don't want with specific projects. Um, and this might be a way to for us to be setting some priorities um, and commenting on like the projects that are coming through the process this year in like April, May, June. I don't know if that was a question for staff. It seemed like there was maybe a, a little bit of one in there in terms of like the presentation and click. And I'll, I'll just say that I don't, I'm not super familiar with how the click process works and like if there are presentations or you you would probably know more than me, Alyssa, having served on the uh, yeah. co committee, it, but it wasn't a question for staff. It was more a comment for the group as we're thinking about what what um, can and can't this resolution do for us. But there are like other things that we can do and other responsibilities that I have as committee chair that folks can ask of me in terms of making sure that that's communicated out through this this different process. So I, it was more of an information share with the group than it. I, I, if that were to move forward, I would imagine that I would have a role as committee chair to like email the click chair and ask if we could present there, not that staff would be involved with that. Cool. Thanks for clarifying that. Dan, did you want to react to that? Uh, yeah, I think that's a great idea, Alyssa. I'm uh, I'm not sure how that would work in with the presentations uh, that uh, that have been given by Public Works and various department staff, and those are likely going to be all recorded again this year instead of being a live uh, presentation. But definitely, uh, I think it'd be something that uh, a presentation could be done at their uh, public hearing. And uh, they've got citizen input uh, sessions before that, as you know, and uh, that if you wanted to have them rate, get in on the rating of projects this year, that would probably be better than the public hearing, which is at the end. That's it.
Thanks, Dan. And thanks, Alyssa, for that perspective while we're thinking about what how to strategically use this opportunity for a resolution. Uh, Matthew, I saw your video. Come on. Did you have something you wanted to chip in? OK, great. Other perspectives or strategy that we should think about going into this. I've been just kind of making a bulleted list of some of these suggestions as we go into um, crafting the resolution and a little bit trying to make sure that we're in a good spot before we get to a place where I maybe have to read a long block of text for everyone uh, for us to get going. Phil? Yeah, right. Looking forward to the long block of text uh, that uh, someone would, would write. Um, I'm not feeling confident to do that, but you know, I was just reflecting on, again, we have new council members and um, as Alyssa said, sort of being in touch with the pedestrian advisory council, you know, since since it used to be the pedestrian bicycle advisory council, it does, you know, perhaps it's more important this year than in other years to, uh, yeah, be sort of uh, to harmonize harmonize our recommendation um, and to echo some even the same language as the uh, pedestrian advisory council has, so that both click but more importantly the city council are hearing a more unified uh, voice i'll just jump in and say i do have a copy of their draft resolution it's not final i don't think or maybe it is like they maybe they voted on it earlier this week um i could screen share that if that is within the bounds of clerk's office stuff it's online, Alyssa, um, and right. it is and it is draft. Just so everybody knows, but but yeah, so feel free to to share. Does that feel useful to folks? I could use some head nods or thumbs up before I try to try to figure out a screen share. Okay. And while Alyssa's pulling that up, just uh, since it was kind of brought up like the what's allowed, what's not allowed, um, Heather does have some language as well today. And so just so you know, we, we will be like putting text up on the screen and changing text potentially um, if that's where the conversation goes, but we'll just have to read stuff aloud. So could get a little lengthy for that, but that's the process. Okay, so I can't see anyone's video anymore, um, but if folks could affirm verbally that they can see this, this is what I have. Yep, I can't see, see that. that. <laughs> I also put the link in the chat for anyone who wants to open it there. Great, thanks. So I'll just give folks a minute or two to read and then stop screen sharing. Whenever Heather prompts me. <laughs> Right, I managed to make it to the end there. Would anyone else like to have more time? Are we good to release Alyssa's screen? Any reactions before we take it down? I think for me, something that stands out here is the third paragraph or the third set of sentences down, um, really calling out the CIP process itself. Um, that's something that resonates 
for me in some of the questions and conversations that we've had. Uh, this is great. Ditto. Yeah, I like the urgency because it is urgent and I agree the CIP process slows all of this down. This is Cadence. I also like the urgency of this, not to hate too much on, on public work staff who work on all of this. I know it's a lot of work. Um, but yeah, it feels weird for us as like a local society to be so embroiled about whether or not bus only lanes are going to be the harbinger of doom when having just recently watched Don't Look Up on Netflix last week. Uh, feels like we should be doing a whole lot more, a whole lot quicker in the immediate time frame. So I am generally supportive of, of this approach. Um, and I like this resolution. I commend them for being bold to write this. Uh, how do folks feel about the length of this and whether this is a good length for us to shoot for? I think we've talked a little bit about how long or not long this should be, um, but maybe if we can be on the same page with what we're headed for, that might get us there. Yeah, I like this length. It was pretty quick to read. Um, as we could tell on our, our end. From from my perspective, which is staff, um, I think it's a good uh, length and also I, I appreciate the, the specific program recommendations. So kind of context first and then what does that mean? Like what is, what's the actual ask? Appreciate that aspect as well. Uh, Philip here. I, yeah, I, and the length is 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 good. It, it, there could be a, a little more calling out as as the BAC has done in previous resolutions of uh, the um, uh, you know specific policies like the transportation action um, plan, the uh, climate emergency uh, could do a little more of that. Um, in terms of, I think, a, in terms of program recommendation, the PBAC really just. I mean, really has one recommendation, uh, $40 million. I think we can have a little more specificity. And, you know, one thing that occurs to me is that we, you know, at the federal level, we we do have this infrastructure money, which will be coming to Minnesota. And uh, I think we need to say, say, say something about, you know, with new money coming for transportation eventually to Minneapolis, we, we do not want to see what happened at, at the federal level, which is, you know, we actually, uh, you know, USDOT shifted slightly to higher percentage of funded concrete car projects and a, a lower percentage, two or three percent lower uh, bed uh, bike bed transit projects, even though the bike bed transit projects are getting more money in absolute terms, the percentage shift in the USDOT budget draft budget for the infrastructure bill that I've seen is it's not great. And so I think we need to say something about basically we do not want to see any infrastructure money coming and being used so overwhelmingly for um, car only infrastructure. That would be just one specific that I would put in a, a BAC recommendation. OK. If you all want to see the draft language that I started, I, I'm happy to share that. And maybe we can do a similar process that we just did with this. And if we decide to scrap what I put up, we don't have to read. And if we do want to start making changes to it and use that as our base, then 
we can read it out loud at that time. Does does that seem like an OK transition? That sounds good, Heather. OK. Um, I will also just kind of summarize uh, some of the bullet points that I heard from folks to let me get my screen up. So before we get super into that, um, I just want to mention some of the questions, comments that I heard in the discussion ahead, uh, just to bring them front to mind uh, that I may not have included here is accountability to the BAC um, for getting a response or updates based on this resolution from Public Works or from Council and whether or not we want to include that here. Uh, how to connect with new Council members and harmonize the language from the PAC's resolution. Uh, whether or not we should add an expected amount of dollars encumbered for bike infrastructure and mentioning the infrastructure bill money specifically around a percentage shift uh, do we want to specifically call out protected or separated bike lanes? Should we include a timeline? And will we include a bulleted project list? Um, and if we don't, is there a way, a different way to share perspectives with the click and the PAC? So then I will move over here. I took some of the language from the old resolution, updated it with a few things. Uh, I'm not going to be offended if no one wants most of the things that are in here, but I thought it'd be good to get us started someplace. Um, Heather, can you make it a little larger or s stretch out the screen? A little bigger font. If if Phil, if you do control and scroll on your own screen, you can kind of zoom in and out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks. OK, got it. Yeah. Yeah, cool. okay. Okay, does cool. that help enough? Is that okay? Cool, cool. Dan, you've got your hand up. Yes. Um, oops, what's going on? Got this feedback going on. Okay, here we go. So, um, in the first paragraph, the uh, sort of the, the last part uh, where it talks about to achieve these goals, city streets need to be rebuilt so that cars have minimal access to. The right of way. There you go. Little thing there. Um, I'm wondering if there's a different word that can be used than minimal. And I was thinking adequate. I was thinking. I don't know what to think, but what came back to me a little bit was to align this with the transportation action goals. Uh, might be a better. 
than minimal. And uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with that percentage about what, uh, you know, what we're looking at trying to do in uh, the next 10 years as far as, uh, you know, the gain there, but it's it's substantial and to try to relate it back to that. That might be a way of saying that better. Should we say just that uh, access for people walking, biking, walking, rolling and biking should be prioritized over access for cars if we don't want to use the word minimal? Yeah, that'd be fine. I'm, I'm just I'm I'm keying on the word minimal and just seeing some people being uh, excited about that and where we don't want them to be excited about that per se. And uh, I, I, I think that works what you said, Dan. Also, I don't know if this is the if the CIP resolution is the place for this or not, but uh, one thing that I don't think the PAC's resolution uh, caught for me, it talked a lot about the important language of the climate emergency, but it it mentioned Vision Zero, but also didn't emphasize that I think we're moving backwards in terms of safety. Uh, that's a concern for me. It feels like our streets are feeling less safe, not more safe, and we could use uh, invest further investments uh, in that arena. Uh, Bree, I think you you're next. Yeah, so I liked how the PACs um, kind of broke it down in sections and in my mind like what we're trying to hit is like, you know, the climate emergency, the CIP uh, process, and I would say equity and the continuation of um, oppressing certain communities, um, majority BIPOC, um, and how we need to move that equitably and faster as well. Um, and that kind of ties in with um, the urgency of climate um, change because um, those communities are also hit by that the most as well. Um, and then get into TAP um, and then individual like program like, like Vision Zero um, and the safety bit that was just mentioned. I think that would be easier to read and then easier for us to kind of put together as well. Bree, can you just, before I move too far forward here, I'm trying to figure out how to manage um, writing down what you're sharing and, and kind of where, does with a comment that I just put in the document, does that make sense to you? I can't tell if it'll be too small for you to read. Oh, I see it, yeah. Yeah, and include TAP in programs and safety. Because also just thinking about like folks, the new city council members, then we kind of can do like a one line of like climate emergency, like, okay, you know, redlining and things like that about equity um, and then tie it in with climate change. Um, yeah, I think that would be easy for them to read and then kind of get kind of the... Um, Any other specific comments here? I'm kind of wondering if before we go maybe any further down into the weeds, if we want to just do some like general grows and glows, what are some things that we like about this and what are some things that we dislike or want to change? Uh, so as we're reshuffling, um, maybe we can move through that quickly.
So it sounds like there are maybe some structural comments and there are some prioritization comments. Dan, you want to go? Yeah, I like uh, your comment about uh, working with the uh, the park board, Minneapolis Regional Park Board to support goals. I'm not sure what you, you mean Minneapolis Park Board or is Regional Park Board means something else? No, I think that's good. I'm just mixing up my acronyms and letters and words and things. I can take that part out. Yeah, um, I think that's good to mention them. And there's actually a, uh, a, pro a program recommendation that uh, I'll talk about later when if you get to that point. But I like this. I, I think the regional came from there is an R in the acronym. It's a uh, Minneapolis Park Parks. and Recreation. Yeah. Board. Recreation. yeah. <laughs> I may or may not have typed this on my phone while riding in a car. Thanks. No, Heather, I think it 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 reads very well. I think it does need a focused, um, you know, kind of the ask or asks, um, mm -hmm. like, like the PBA or the um, pedestrian advisory board did. But no, I think it it, uh, it leads in beautifully, very very nicely. Thank you for pulling it together. Okay. Um, just a proposal is maybe it'd be useful to see like if the program recommendation section from the PACs is something that people want to see in this one um, and kind of merging the two in in that way a little bit. I don't, I don't know if how, how folks feel about that, but it felt like there was probably a little more discussion needed with this group about like the $20 million tag and how to phrase some of that. And that, that could be one kind of solid point to talk about for a little bit. Well. For ease of access, I just tried to move this language from the PAC resolution over here. Sorry, break it up more like how they had it. Anybody wants me to go back down there? If we were going to. I'm conscious of. The length as well. We said we liked the length of the PAC. This one is currently longer than that. And if we add the program recommendations will be longer still. Um, so just just a comment there. Dan, did you have another or yeah, go ahead. Yeah, if you could pull up those program recommendations or. Yep, I'll put it back. Dan Booty, did you have something you wanted to throw out? Yeah, just as far as length, I think if we put headings in and break, kind of organize the sections like what uh, Bree was talking about, I think that that would help with the length. I don't, I wouldn't cut out language if there's language we want to keep, but organizing it with uh, in blocks could make it uh, not seem as long. And I had a couple of thoughts on program recommendations, and I don't have final language for this, And but I'll just throw it out there to uh, be what they are, and you might want to be able just to put them down in your notes. I think, um, you know, the, the Transportation Action Plan is broken up with strategies that are uh, taking place, strategies and actions that are taking place on a three-year cycle. So there are a number of 20 to 23 actions that are, you know, on the list that uh, would really be nice to have a report back to how we're doing on them. Because after the 2023, you've got 24, 27, and 28, and 30. And uh, 
just to kind of keep this on track, I'd like to uh, I'd like to report. I mean, I'd like to hear how they're doing against those different actions. And um, I don't know how to say that shortly, but I thought if you just put it down in your notes, it'd be something to reflect on. And the other one is uh, something that came. It's a little more specific than that, uh, but it's has to do with uh, uh, trail and shared use path maintenance. Uh, let's just call it bikeway maintenance. Um, that uh, that we should really have something that's modeled after uh, after what uh, Minneapolis Parks and Recreation just did. And I can't remember what that program name is, but um, it's definitely a, a thing to address uh, maintenance to categorize to catalog the uh, the bike maintenance or the catalog the bikeways and to uh, the condition of them and to uh, go about a, a method of uh, replacement as needed. And um, I can help you on that if that seems to make sense in the future, but. Uh, I just thought it was a great thing to, and this might be a great place to uh, mention that and to actually advocate for it. And I, I'd really be interested, Matthew and uh, Chris, uh, I don't know of any such program that exists now. Uh, you know, I was just looking at the uh, the bike counts, for instance, uh, and, uh, you know, the bike counts haven't been pub publicly updated, I think from Maybe the last is 2017 or 2018. And we 2018. Through, yeah, we went through a reduced uh, counts the last during the COVID times, and uh, it would be nice to uh, get that back into gear in a bigger, broader way. And that kind of fits in with, you know, bikeway maintenance and all that other stuff. Just to respond to that last part um, with, with the, the counts, that that it wasn't exactly related to COVID. Just so you know, it, it was partially just kind of a change in the way that we're doing things. And we have these automated counts and that data hasn't been made public yet and can be and will be. And it's more a matter of kind of figuring out the best way to do that. So I, I hear you there and I'm happy yeah. to talk more about that. And um, I'm, I'm the point person on that. So I, I would like, like to talk more about that, Dan. And then also just with the TAP stuff, um, we, we hear you on that. I won't be the, I mean, I'm not going to tell you not to put something in the CIP resolution or any resolution. Um, personally, I, I'm not sure that that's the right fit for this. And I will say that like part of the TAP was committing to a two year um, report to council. So that that two first two year report is December of this year. So about a year away, we're one year into the adoption of TAP. Um, Dan, if you'd be willing to just email me that ask though to get an update um i think maybe we could talk about how we get an update for the committees before then um sure. so I, I yeah thanks thanks for raising that I, and i hear you and uh yeah and then i see i think Alyssa had her hand up. yeah so i want to come back to something that Phil was talking about earlier in relation to the last paragraph here uh, and the federal dollars. So federal money coming in for roads and bridges in Minnesota is going to total almost $5 billion this year. Um, and that's going to be coming in through existing processes um, that generally require a 20% match from the uh, it's called a local match. Um, so if anyone is familiar with the regional solicitation, which has come before the BAC and had a presentation um, the last number of years uh, where they share the projects that they're looking for, 80% of that is paid for by the federal government, 20% of that is paid for locally. And so as we think about what the city can be doing to push on the like what is going to happen with that nearly five billion dollars a lot of that is obviously not going to come to minneapolis but a lot of it can um and likely will and so thinking about how do we in our cip process because the cip process is where we fund uh that 20 percent of those capital projects 
um, and say we are committing the money that we need to build X project, um, that not saying we're going to just build roads and bridges and do like highway expansion project. Obviously, the city of Minneapolis like doesn't own the highway right away and so isn't going to be doing highway expansion projects for the most part. Um, but thinking about how do we really prioritize walking, biking, transit, complete streets, however we want to frame that. Um, I think it is really important to think about this, this idea of, you know, in the past years, we've really focused on what is the money internally that we're allocating to uh, cars versus other modes of transportation. Um, and I think that is exacerbated by this federal funding that's about to come in and, and really encourage the city to just build roads to their heart's content and sort of set aside walking, biking, and transit because the amount of money that we have as a state for, for example, transit, I don't think that walking and biking are even called out as priorities by the federal government is like a fifth of that $5 billion. It's like less, it's like $800 million, right? It's less than a fifth of that total funding. Um, and so, yeah, I think I think that could be a really important focus of that last paragraph as opposed to just talking about the city budget in isolation which has also been really important and thinking about the impact of that $5 billion and how much of it is probably gonna be directed to the metro area as the area where like half the state's population lives. So um, be happy to connect more about that offline um, or an email if there's like more details needed there. Um, but I, I just wanna like highlight Phil's point from earlier that I think is really important because a lot of what we're talking about is at a much smaller scale than the federal funding that we're talking about. And so, you know, even if we do all of the best things we can within our city budget, if we're not doing our best to sort of mitigate the harm of car focused infrastructure and car focused dollars that are coming from the federal government, we're like losing the forest for the tree <laughs> for the trees. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, really well, <clears throat> really well said, uh, Alyssa. And I, yeah, I think we 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 could say something like we expect to s spend more than twenty percent because I, it's now at maybe seventeen or eighteen. We expect to spend more than a fifth, more than twenty percent of infrastructure dollars, local match um, infrastructure bill money on <clears throat> a bike bed bed transit. Um, I guess uh, two points, other points is just uh, Dan sort of made me think about. I would say we, we should highlight this December 2022 TAP report to the city council um, and sort of remind us and staff and city council that we we are looking to to see at this, this first report um, on the 10 year accomplishments under the transportation action plan. We're expecting to see progress by December 2022 or at least uh you know click or, or um, you know capital improvement dollars committed to uh making good on the plan adopted by council so I, I think that December 2022 report is is important thinking about those uh out year 2023 2026 uh tap uh, recommendations uh, you know thinking again once again about how do we help actually get people more people on the road moving feeling more comfortable and and so this whole question that we talked about before of wayfinding um signage uh, trail markings um branding of of bike ways uh, a pattern book as i think the uh, minneapolis park board is working on you know that's something that's in the out years but we might want to say with an influx of money this is pretty cheap we want to accelerate that project we know it's going to take more staff and more money um, but I mean, again, that could be, I mean, maybe it's too fine bore and, and it's a little too vague, but I think, I think wayfinding branding is just, it just helps people, especially new newcomers, um, to biking, walking, it just helps, helps them and also shows the integrated nature connections to, um, again, bus, busing and, and pedestrians. So, so those are just a, a couple other points.
Great points, everyone. Any other comments from anybody? OK, then I'll say, how do we want to take steps to incorporate some of what's come up uh, to reshuffle the paragraphs or make any changes to the sentences? Uh, how might you all recommend moving forward? Alyssa, Dan, I couldn't see who got up there first. <laughs> uh, this is Alyssa. Um, having been the lead on drafting this in prior years, um, I guess I would suggest that a Google Doc rather than uh, passing things around via email might be good just with the length of this. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, I'll just call out specifically that we can't have a quorum of members uh, <laughs> on an email chain editing a document. Um, otherwise, it becomes a business that we are doing behind the scenes. But I think there are a smaller number. This is more of a, a subgroup of members um, on the call today. I don't think we have reached our quorum of 16. So um, probably anybody on the call today can be involved in that. Um, and then yeah, would, would def defer to you, Heather, as our primary editor. Thank you. Thank you for all your work pulling this together. It is uh, thankless work to, to do this a lot of the time. So I really, really appreciate it. I know it took a lot of time and will take a lot of time. I got to start from your draft, so that was helpful. Yeah, I was just going to say, Heather, I'd like to see what you uh, <clears throat> can kind of put together here. I think Dan Booty's comments about blocking out stuff and uh, getting something uh, reorganized here would be really helpful to review. And I think uh, you're the closest to it. And I really appreciate your efforts as well. Is there anybody on the call now who doesn't want to be involved in taking this forward? Because I will go ahead and take that suggestion to create a Google Doc. Um, and I can, I'll move over what we have here uh, with the new comments um, and try to incorporate some of those. Um, I'm happy to kind of um, maestro that editing space. Um, if that's helpful, we can use the comments and um, the different reviewing sections maybe to preserve the integrity of the core document. Um, and then make changes as we agree in the comments. Does that seem appropriate for everyone? Great. No, that's really excellent. I really also add my appreciation for, for you doing this detailed work. I appreciate all of you wanting to come and contribute to this. It wouldn't be would just be my thoughts um, here. So, OK, so knowing that we're going to have this further space to work on it. Um, any thoughts on timeline? If it feels reasonable to get a draft of this pulled together well enough that we would be ready to share it for the next BAC meeting, or if we should move our deadline back. I see you're clapping and appreciate those. I personally feel like it's possible, provided that everyone can take another crack at looking at the reviewed document uh, based on the comments that we have had today. I'll just say um, I, I don't see a downside to bringing it to the next full BAC meeting. Uh, so like as far as everyone's able to, to get this, um, via Google Docs in the next couple few weeks um, and then bring it like we can always table it for the next meeting if we if we have to at that one. Um, which uh, yeah. So I, I think it's a good goal and also I, I 
applauded you earlier. Thanks, Heather. I agree. You've done a great job with this, so appreciate all the work on the CIP stuff. Thanks, y'all. Always better to have some place to start. OK, any other comments, suggestions? Otherwise, I will create this Google Doc and send it out to everyone uh, who was on the meeting today. And our next steps will be to review this um, just so that I don't forget. I'll probably go ahead and create this document without the comments incorporated uh, and then be able to get the comments incorporated over the next day or so uh, so that I don't do the whole thing in the library here. Then I think for the time being that will conclude our CIP resolution discussion. Um, if anyone has any uh, follow ups, feel free to reach out um, and otherwise I'll just see your comments in that document. Do we want to go ahead and move forward into updates before we close out the meeting. Dan, I remember you saying earlier you had something you wanted to share. If it's Dan Miller, I, I think I shared it. <laughs> OK, great. Any other updates or things to share or questions, comments or concerns before we move on with our evenings? Alyssa. I will just announce that uh, next week, the 13th, I think, there is an open house around the Hennepin Avenue reconstruction. Um, there's also a public comment period that ends close to the end of the month. Um, so if folks have energy and excitement for the staff recommended Hennepin Avenue design, um, please express your support for those, uh, for the details of the, that plan. Um, either by attending a public meeting or submitting a comment. Awesome. Well, if there are no more comments, then I think we can say we had a good meeting and uh, go ahead and close this out. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, good. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, bye, bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, so. Bye. Thanks. Bye.